What's good, everybody? Welcome to yet another weekend live stream. I'm your host, Kevin from Coinsider, and today we're going to chat about the case for bulls versus the case for bears and just my thoughts on all the strongest points for each side. Um, like always, I will leave you timestamps afterwards if you're watching this after the stream. But in the meantime, feel free to use the live chat to write any thoughts or questions you may have, and we'll be sure to go over it. All right, let's check out the charts real quick. Uh, yeah, hello, infinite expansion and WIS. But let me go to the charts. Okay, so um, as you can see, things have been kind of sideways for a couple of days now after dropping a bit. Um, a few days ago, Bitcoin's hovering around 58,000, 57,000, and everything is kind of flat. I mean, Avalanche is still rocketing. CRO rocketed a lot after it got the naming rights for Staples Centers, which was uh, Staples Center, which was really kind of a surprise to me, actually. Um, but it, I think they made up the market cap of their coin with the amount it pumped like 31% in the past seven days, just from that news alone. So I wish I held on to more CRO. Unfortunately, I did not. Um, but really got me thinking, right? Let's go back to, there's a lot of discussion about whether we have more downside or whether this is just a minor blip and we're going to continue to rock it to like, 100k plus through the end of the cycle but one thing that i noticed is that a lot of people have been adjusting their predictions downwards like it used to be people saying like 200k 300k for the cycle but given recent price action it's been more tampered to like oh maybe we'll reach 100k for this cycle um, and so that's just something i wanted to point out i still think we can reach 100k but it'll just take a little bit longer and this cycle will kind of elongate too as well. But let me know what y'all think about what your updated price prediction for this top, this cycle top will be. All right, that's something I'm really interested to hear everyone's thoughts on. And just real quick, um, I want to give a quick shout out to our channel sponsors. They've been sponsoring us for a couple months now, CoinMe. And they're doing a $1,000 in BTC sweepstakes. And this is happening every week through the end of December. So if you go to this Coin Me Near Me page, you can sign up easy. Yes, it does require your email address and name. And like it's in the US. And they're actually pretty cool. You can um, buy Bitcoin straight up from like Coinstar or MoneyGram machines, like at your local grocery store. So I left a link for you down below. Please use my link, but anyone can sign up and you can sign up additional times um, after it resets every Sunday. So just a quick shout out there. But anyways, let's talk some case for the bears and the bulls. Um, so I know some people like to talk about top signals, right? Those are, it's kind of funny when people talk about let me zoom in a little bit. Top signals. And this is kind of funny because nearly two thirds of Gen Z think they'll become crypto millionaires. And obviously we all think that we can become crypto millionaires, right? But that's just not realistic given like the market's not going to help everyone succeed, at least not easily. There's going to be like, huge downturns and like swings and misses and things that catch us off guard. Um, so like crypto does represent an amazing opportunity to build wealth quickly. Of course, that's one of the big reasons why we're interested in it. But I don't think like this could be like a top signal. If everyone's getting into crypto, Everyone's becoming like a Finfluencer, making TikTok videos of crypto, thinking that they're going to get rich this cycle, right? That's just 
not how the market works. Um, but let me go back to the, let's see, AVAX 77K. Let me see the live chat. Metaverse hype is still ongoing. It looks like it. Decentraland, I sold it too early. Um, it went up like 15% more. Elon sends to sell. Why would Elon sell his Bitcoin? I don't think he will. I mean, he just sold his Tesla stock for a bunch of liquidity. But yeah, okay. Um, you guys can hear me all right, right? Just let me know, by the way. Let me go back to another fun thing. I don't know how many of y'all participated in this, but Constitution Dow raised like $40 million together with a bunch of people for a copy of the Constitution that they wanted to own together collectively, right? That's what a DAO is good for. But that was like a huge ordeal. I know a lot of my friends donated, but they lost because it, it's quite funny. Ken Griffin of Citadel, um, he is the one that Robin Hood and like the Wall Street Bets people hate. He, over, he outbid the Constitution DAO by like a dollar or so because everyone could see how much the DAO was holding, right? So they knew that they only had to bid like a penny more and not anything more. So people were saying that like, this was amazing for coordination, this was exciting, but also it had some limitations. It may have to keep things secret in the future. And also people were like, this may be a top signal as well. If like um, everyone is like throwing money around in the DAO, trying to buy the constitution together, that means things are frothy. That means everyone has extra ether to send, right? That's that's quite quite funny. Um, let's see what's next. What's next? So the next Fed chair is going to um, be chosen soon, right? So Joe Biden has a choice on his hand. Will it be Jerome Powell, the existing one who was um, put in by Trump? And a lot of people said he's done a good job, right? He's done. Um, as well as any Fed chair could have, given the circumstances. And um, and Brainard, I hope I'm Bernard Brainard. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She's also a current Federal Reserve governor, um, and so she is in Biden's party. So um, he's considering choosing her as Fed chair instead. Um, uh, some people say it won't change things much for crypto, but. Other people are analysts think that Brainard may be harder on the markets and cause it to to crash sooner. Like maybe she'll push for um, like raising rates and tampering or just like clamping down on inflation. Right. As we all know, inflation has been going pretty haywire um, the past few months or even year, like the food we eat commodities, everything, real estate, everything is inflating, right? And so they say it's transitory, but if Brainard comes in and she's like, okay, we want to raise rates soon, that may cause all the super highly inflated stock prices, like 100x price to earnings, and even like Tesla and Rivian. I mean, did you guys know Rivian, like the EV, the electric vehicle company, they were at a $100 billion market cap with absolutely zero in revenue, not joking, zero in revenue. That's like a sign of the times, right? And then a lot of like fintech plays are at a hundred. I mean, they're great companies, the fintech companies, but they're like a hundred X plus like price to earnings. So things are pretty crazy and frothy in the markets. And if the Fed chair does any change that we're not expecting, that may crash the markets and other risk on assets like Bitcoin or crypto, right? I mean, we all like to talk about crypto decoupling from um, the stock markets. And it kind of has and, and sometimes, but like it's still a risk on asset. And if people want cash and they want to flood to safety, then they're going to sell crypto. We saw that in, in March of 2020, right? So... I think this is something to keep an eye on. Um, not sure in terms of like crypto regulation and stuff. It doesn't look like it will make that big of a difference. But that is a kind of bearish case. Let me go back to the 
live chat real quick. Gala is ripping. Check out Ethereum. Um, okay, let me do those in a bit. Dogecoin is forking. All right, let's go back to... Um, so here is something. We're, we're going to stick to the bearish side first, okay? The top signals, the new Fed chair coming, and then we'll get to the bullish side after, and then we'll take a look at your your picks, and I'll share my view on Polkadot, Gala, Metaverse, whatever you guys are saying in live chat. Okay, so keep those coming. But now let's keep on going with the, the bearish case right now for the markets and then shift our focus to the bullish case next. So another bearish thing is right here. Let me kind of zoom in here so you can see this better. Okay, so we all know the whales know more than us, right? There should be no debate about that. And if you look at this supply distribution chart, the pink one is the guppies. Those are the people with barely any coins, the addresses. The red is like also small guppies. And they are both trending up, buying the dip. Yellow is kind of going sideways. This is 100 to 1,000 coins. And whales, the teal, the green, blue, teal color, that is dropping down. Now let me just zoom in even more to show you. Right here, you see that? You see that green line dropping down? That is the whales. And of course, whales know way more than us. So it's always good. I always like to keep track of what they're doing. And right now they're selling, which maybe they know more than us in terms of what's coming next in the short to midterm. Right, I'm just saying the bear case, not saying that I'm trading that or or hedging because I did close my my leverage short in just a tiny bit of profit, but I closed it because I want to wait and see. I think it could go a little bit higher before potentially dropping down some more. But I mean, I can't predict the market; no one can. So I wanted to manage my risk properly, and I closed my short in just a tiny, like one percent profit, and it was only a two x short. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was fun. I wanted to short because in the future, I think um, instead of selling our coins straight up at the top of a bull market, it may be better to hedge. That way you don't get the tax hit. And also, yeah, it's just easy to hedge. Maybe I, I'll make a video about how to hedge properly. I use DYDX, which is amazing, by the way. Let me know, um, smash that like button and let me know in the live chat if that's something you're interested in, learning how to hedge properly. Okay, so something else that is, uh, let me see what else is on there. Yeah, um, something else I want to note is if you know, <coughs> excuse me, I had to sneeze. Um, if you know me, I've been a longtime critic of Plan B because I think his stock to flow model is wrong, his floor model is wrong, his S2FX model is wrong. I think all are gonna break within like the next six months. Yes, you can hold me to that. That is my prediction. His floor model said 98K November, which means we have like 10 days to go like almost double. No way, his floor model is gonna break. And then his stock to flow model is gonna break. You should watch my video and I explain why his his standard S2F model is completely wrong from a foundational level. Um, it's the, it's the, uh, the statistics. I'm oh, sorry, that's like a tongue twister. It's really the statistics. Like they had a special property that we thought stock to flow model kind of qualified for, but it turned out to be disproven by the stats community for his particular um, Bitcoin like price modeling application and so that's why he came up with the s2fx model which makes zero sense because it's based on comparing like stock to flow market caps of like gold and silver and whatnot and if you look at other analysis that's he's cherry picking data like crazy you can't actually build a legit stock to flow model for gold so his s2fx model makes zero sense at all and that's that's predicting something crazy like 228k for this cycle's peak right absolutely bonkers like 
He is irrelevant. His models are stupid. I'm sorry. I don't need to have another model to um, to replace it. I can we can prove something is wrong and without offering something in in place of it, right? I don't know what model is good. I would love to have a secret model that works, but I would rather be intellectually honest and not kind of get clouded and try to hold on to any bit of relevance I have kind of like plan B is doing and putting out a model that is clearly wrong. It's wrong from a foundational statistical level. Okay, that's rant over. Sorry, guys, I had to do that. I'm just saying. Anyways, um, something else I really like, okay? This. Check this out. A really underrated... Wait, let me see if you can see it. No, you can't. A really underrated strategy is copy trading Phoenix whales. That's Bitfinex whales and counter trading Bybit apes. And the reason why is because the Phoenix whales are all the Asian whales who are great at trading. They know, you know them. They know math. They know computer stuff. They're amazing at trading like Suzu from Three Arrows Capital. Their fund is amazing. And um, counter trading Bybit apes. Those are like the guppies like you and I going degen, 100x long, 100x short. So that's what they're saying. Strategy, copy trade the Phoenix whales, counter trade the Bybit apes. And uh, Pentoshi even says, Phoenix has made the tops and bottoms on ETH and BTC, right? And someone says, is there a simple way to copy trade them? Well, glad y'all asked. Let me show you. Right here. Coin glass. Bitfinex long, short, open interest. Let me take a look for you guys. Okay, let me zoom out for you a bit. So long short ratio, right? And you can see all the different ones, but what we want to focus on is Bybit. You can see that right here. This one, Bybit is 63% long and Bitfinex. Oh, wow. This changed in the past, oh, five minutes. Okay. Let me go to maybe 12 hours. Okay, it changes depending on, um, but look, this is what, one hour period? Bybit is way more leaning towards long than short, which is Bitfinex is a little bit on the short side, right? So there is a gap. They're not always gonna be huge gaps, but in those tiny differences, you can, and, and there are other charts you can see on TradingView to see like the open interest for longs and shorts for Bitfinex. And the, the idea is that you want to copy trade the whales on Bitfinex who really like manipulate. They're the manipulators of the price, right? And um, they're the ones who know what's up. So copy trade them potentially. Not saying it's always going to work, but yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, so those are kind of the bearish case stuff. I want to move to the bullish case stuff, but let me see in the meantime. A million sheep, verge. Verge is old school. Why do people even trade that? You should change into some better privacy coins or whatnot. Polkadot's good. I like Polkadot. Gala is really good as well. Um, Radio coin, I do not know anything about that. I might take a look in a bit. Yes, Gala is Metaverse. Thank you, Wargasm. Uh, I'm right on S2F and Cardano. Thank you. Okay, so I want to move to the bullish case because this title of this live stream is the bulls versus the bears, right? Who's going to win for the battle of the upcoming market? Um, so... Let me go to that, but real quick, like I said at the beginning of this video, I want to give a shout out to CoinMe. Um, they are a cash to crypto exchange where you can literally go to Coinstar machines and in like your neighborhood Walmart or whatever and get some um, Bitcoin on their voucher with their app. But 
they're doing a weekly giveaway through the end of the year. Really easy to sign up, and it's a thousand Bitcoin each week, or a thousand uh, USD in Bitcoin. My bad. Uh, you could check out the link in my description below if you're interested in just entering. Um, and yeah, okay. Let's talk bull case. Okay, let me see what was my first bull case stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, but uh, okay. Let me go back. So one thing is stock market, right? Stock markets are still at all time highs. So while that's the case, I think that any correction may be like relatively short lived while we're in still a bull trend ourselves in the crypto space. Right. So it's much easier for Bitcoin and crypto to recover and get back to bull mode while the stock market is still super frothy at all time highs. Now, if they were going down hard, then I would be worried as well for the crypto markets. But that's one case to be made. Stocks at all time high, what you're seeing in this chart. Um, let's see, what else? Another thing is that a lot of people say that this is just a normal retest in the during the bull market, right? Because we often see retests in bull markets and it's not all, it's not up only like we would like. Right. It, we've seen big like 20, 30 percent retraces during previous bull markets before, but then they've like bought the dip and bounced back up and recovered quickly. So some people are saying that this is potentially a retest and we could see 53,000. I mean, a lot of people are waiting for 53,000, so I'm not sure it gets there. Maybe it gets like I think the most likely case is either it gets like 55,000 just above it or it goes under 53,000 and they start to panic and panic sell again, like maybe 49,000. That's just what I think because the market likes to punish um, the, the majority of like crowd following herd mind people, right? That the market likes to cause maximum pain. I'm sure you've heard that before. So, but this is a potential case. I think if we can get to the 53 level, or even lower, that would be an amazing longing. I'm, I'm potentially going to go leverage long for a bit, maybe with like Sol, Solana, or even Bitcoin per se. Um, and let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else? So another thing is that Bitcoin dominance has been dropping a lot. Like, look at this. Bitcoin drop dominance on my mouse is, is continuing to drop again. And that means alt season. But is it alt season? According to this, it is not alt season because alt season is where we're like above this level. And so according to this, it's not alt season. Is it alt month? It's close to alt month but not fully alt year. It is altcoin year. This is awesome. This site is blockchaincenter.net and they have a like altcoin season index. So that's that. And let's see if we go here and switch things to the BTC ratio. Let's see, top gains, immutable X. Wow, wow, wow. I did not expect this to pump so much. This is against BTC, by the way. Um, GameFi, I know you guys were asking about GameFi. Sandbox, wow, crazy performance. Alt season, for real, crypto.com. Avalanche, I closed my long against this way too early. Even Voyager, Engine Coin, another GameFi. The Central Land, another GameFi. Elrond, not bad. Okay, I don't really care about those. Harmony 1, decent. And then a lot of stable coins, right? And then everything else is under the stable coins. Um, but GameFi doing well. Some Layer 2s. Crypto.com, of course, with their Stadium deal. So, yeah. It's not true alt season. 
Um, a lot of them are still down against BTC, as you can see, especially DeFi, Phantom, SushiSwap, Terra, Mina, a lot of them down on a one week basis. But a lot of coins are super strong right now, even though Bitcoin retraced quite a bit. So, yeah. Um, and then, let's see. Let's go to the chat real quick. The Ada cultists have arrived. Not too much, right? Oh, dang. Yeah. Your Ada at Soul at 3 moved into AVAX and Soul. Dang, you caught that swing. You caught that perfect swing trade. Amazingly. You rode Ada all the way up and then are now riding AVAX and Soul all the way up. That's freaking amazing. Okay, I will look at Gala afterwards, I promise. But one thing I want to do now is kind of look at the on chain metrics. Because I like to look at on chain metrics. Um, but so this is from Will Clemente's newsletter. So I'll just give some highlights because obviously you can read this yourself. So overall funding has reset a bit because you know how when there's too many degenerate leverage longs, the market likes to crash a bit to kind of liquidate a lot of them and reset, right? That's just how the markets like to move. So funding has reset a bit, um, but he would like to see a final leg down to flip funding fully negative, right? So here is um, the funding rate is in green and the left side shows the funding rate. Soper, spent output profit ratio. It's, um, we've fully reset this metric, meaning that if we are correct about the broader market structure being bullish, we are close to bottoming out if we haven't already. And yeah, and you can see this Soper ratio, um, it's like how it's like the people who are selling if they're selling at a profit or loss essentially and you can see how during the previous drop it broke down under this line and then it broke above when we started getting bullish again confirmation over here and then now it's starting to drop down again so we'll have to see if it touches that line again and goes down, which means we're in for worse or breaks back up like we did in this confirmation right here. Um, confluence is key. Short term holder profit loss ratio. Cost basis. OK. So I like to look at these more macro themes. Um, so on chain cost basis is nowhere near overheated like it was in previous peaks. MBRV Z score is nowhere near this red overheated zone. It's kind of just chilling down here in the middle right now. And back in May, it kind of touched this a little bit, but usually it sh way overshoots. And then supply shock. Um, yeah, basically it all shows that things are not super overheated in the markets. And I do want to note though, I've made content in the past saying that I'm following all of these on-chain analysis to wait for the top, but I think that it may not work this time um, because, or it could work, but just diminish over time, right? Like why does this red zone have to be it, right? We've been dropping, there's not that many data points, so we can't make a super long and confident trend from it. Um, so it may very well be that we barely touch this red zone or barely go under, and then that's it, we go back down, right? I don't think it has to be touch the same levels as before, is my whole point. Um, I, do, I do think it's still worth keeping an eye on these, but that's just my opinion. Um, let's see. What's 
else is there. So let me know what y'all think in terms of kind of the bullish case, the bearish case. Are you bullish right now um, or are you bearish? And what's the time frame, right? Are, is it like we're going to go down to 53K, 49K and then come back up? and hit 100K by end of year, or maybe early next year? Or are we just like pretty much set the macro top and just gonna go sideways for a bit? So that's what I'm wondering, but now let's take a look at some of the projects that y'all were talking about, right? Um, let me see Gala. I've, nope, I've heard people talking about this. Let me zoom out a bit. Um, maybe a little bit hard for y'all to see, but I'm going to zoom out. Oh, this isn't BTC mode. Let me go back to USD mode. Wow, 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 wow. Look at this. Look at this rocket ship. And it's 2 billion market cap. Um, and fully diluted, 12.8 billion. It's on all the big exchanges, Binance and Coinbase. And it's a NFT game or blockchain games. Let's see what exactly they offer together. Recent drops. Oh, they have like NFT drops of like um, in-game items you can use. Spider tanks, Townstar, Mirandis, Echoes of the Empire. Let's see, they're about making blockchain games you actually want to play. Fun first. Owned by players. If you earn, if you win a magical sword on Gala play platforms, it's yours. More than 16,000 player run nodes. Well, their games look pretty. Spider tanks. Let's check this out. These just look like all the all the Steam games that we can play. It looks pretty cool. I mean, if it's polished, if it's like a Steam game, but they have like collectible NFTs in there, I think that's awesome. Have y'all played this, by the way? And because some people say they tried out Axie, but they didn't like it at all. And a lot that's a big criticism here, right? A lot of people say that um, GameFi feels more like DeFi, but you have to click buttons, right? So it's like they're forced to work for it. And it's not actually fun, but I'm curious to hear what y'all think about if these games are actually fun. And if so, which games? I know Star Atlas and Alluvium, they look amazing, but they're not out yet. So I know it's, it's more than that, right? It like AXS does so well because they have such a fine crafted tokenomics and token like how it flows what the tokens are used for how it's generated things like that um but yeah i mean i think ideally the games are truly fun and that would be amazing to uh to play and also invest in zynga cadena no, I have not. I'm going to do Cadena in a couple weeks. Engine Coin. Engine Coin's deep dive worth the hype video is coming out either this ne this next week. Okay, I'll get it out to y'all this next week. Promise you that. Um, and just FYI, a quick teaser. I am bullish on Engine, but I have pros and cons to share with you. As always, let me know after you watch those if you dislike my cons or not. By the way, everyone watching, do you mind giving me a quick like on this video real quick? Because that would help me out immensely. Um, the economics make no sense. See, Ermine, I think that's the big deal. I'm, I'm talking philosophically right now, but play to earn games, blockchain games, I think they need two things to be successful. One is great token economics, like what it's used for, how it's generated, make sure everything supports each other, right? In a harmonious cycle. And the second thing is a truly fun game. Because if the game is not that fun, I mean, sure, like you make some money if you're in developing country, but eh, I don't don't really want to play it long term. So 
Yusuf, yes, Matic. I am so bullish on Matic because it's not only their current solutions, they also have, let me take a look at Matic real quick for you actually. Um, well, that's Polygon. Okay, Polygon Matic. Okay, let me share with y'all this. Polygon, they have now Maiden. Check this out. A Stark-based roll-up. Maiden, dang. ZK roll-up. Development is underway. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. They have... Um, not only that, but they have, let me see, Polygon Chains, ZK Rollups, live, Polygon Proof of Stake, live, Optimistic Rollups coming soon, Validium Chains coming soon. They have all these scaling solutions they're implementing under the Polygon umbrella. So... I don't think we're sufficiently bullish enough on Polygon, and I don't own enough of Polygon. Heck, I need to buy more. I think I sold all mine to swing trade it. But remember how they bought Hermes? Hermes Network is a ZK rollup, and I'm going to have a video coming out about ZK rollups. You guys have to watch. But Polygon, I think they merged or like acquired them for a quick ZK rollup. See, look, Polygon merges with. Hermes Network and $250 million deal. Let me show you guys right here. And this is also super clutch that I bet y'all did not know about before. But Polygon also has Avail, which is for data availability infrastructure for side chains and layer two protocols. I know this is boring stuff because this is like business to business and it doesn't really affect us but this is gonna be so widely adopted in my honest opinion. And so we see Polygon have what, Maiden, their own current solutions, they have Hermes now, they have Avail. So bullish on Polygon. Long-term, long-term. I don't know about short-term price action, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see, back to the live chat. Um, crypto subreddits, honestly, let me see, am I? I think I might be frozen right now. Testing, testing. Hmm. I see. Okay, looks like my, um, is, is my sound still going? I know my, my video is kind of frozen, um, but let me know if you can hear my sound though. But anyways, I really enjoyed this one. I wanna keep it a little bit short today. I hope you can hear me. But anyways, hope you can like this video. I will leave timestamps afterwards. Give me some time though, um, and I'll catch y'all on the next live stream.